Hello, I'm Sarah Perry and this is my new novel Melmoth, which is set in contemporary Prague where Helen Franklin, a woman with some form of guilty secret, discovers the legend of Melmoth the Witness, a woman who follows you everywhere and knows all the wicked things that you have done. She soon begins to think that Melmoth is watching her. My novel was very much inspired by Melmoth the Wanderer by Charles Maturin. This was written in 1820 by an impoverished Irish vicar and it is without exception the most horrifying and distressing book I have ever read. There are some parts of it that upset me so much I actually put my hand over the page so I wouldn't have to see the words. This draws on the ancient legend of the wandering Jew and it tells the story of Melmoth, a man who has sold his soul to the devil and has wandered the earth for 150 years seeking people who live such a terrible, lonely and distressing life they would rather swap places with him than go on living. My Melmoth is a woman and she has been wandering the earth for 2,000 years but the book is really a tribute to this extraordinary work which not enough people have read. One book that had a very profound effect on me when I was young was Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. I had always wanted to write a great titular villain like Frankenstein or Melmoth and I was so envious that when she was a teenager Mary Shelley came up with this extraordinary novel. Now everybody knows the story of the mad scientist who created this monster from dead bodies and reanimated it and brought it to life and that's incredible and marvellous but what she did with this book is to kill God. She did away with the idea of original sin. She did away with the idea that we were born bad. Her Frankenstein's monster, you begin to realise, is a tragic creature, fundamentally very good, who is demeaned by the humans around him. This is the book that taught me that you can be a thumping good read that will keep you up late at night, but also deal with the most profound and complex moral and philosophical ideas. And for the rest of my life, I will be jealous that I did not come up with Frankenstein. One book which I quite often use when I'm teaching the Gothic is Hilary Mantel's Flood. People sometimes think that gothic fiction is about candles on guttering on windowsills and creaking gates and maidens in nightgowns running along corridors, but that's not what the real gothic is. The gothic is about feeling. It's about not being quite sure whether what you're reading is very wicked and you should be appalled by it, or terribly seductive and something that you would like to happen to you. Hilary Mantel's Flood is a perfect example of this. She writes about a small village church in the 1950s who have been told they must modernise and one day a vicar arrives on the doorstep and says I'm going to sort out your administrative matters but it soon becomes clear that this vicar may in fact be the devil and there's an extraordinary scene where a nun very slowly has all the pins taken out of her wimple and you're aware that you ought to be appalled but actually you really want it to carry on happening it's an absolute masterpiece wonderful as all Hilary Mantel's books are this will always be my favourite